Okay, so 99% of algebra students are going to find this problem a little difficult. Now, uh, they actually may be able to solve the problem, but it's probably not going to come without a challenge. So let me explain to you what's going on, and then you can kind of uh, see if you can figure this out. So what we have is a, uh, an equation, and it's uh, xy plus 1 over z minus w is equal to 3 over w. And what I want you to do is to rewrite this uh, equation, okay, and this doesn't really have a lot of meaning to it. It's not like a formula in physics or science or anything like that. It's just a, uh, an equation that has multiple variables. But I want you to rewrite this equation in terms of W. So you're going to have to shuffle around all the other variables, and you're going to have W is equal to something over here, okay? And that something is obviously going to involve uh, X, Y. Uh, Z and some numbers or whatever the case might be. So uh, what we're really looking at here is solving for a specific variable in an equation. Okay, and this kind of falls under the category of working with formulas or something called literal equations. And this is very, very important in algebra. I'm going to show you a couple of basic examples. And of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step in just one second. But uh, I want to see if you can do this. How well are you doing in algebra? If you're doing pretty well, then you should be able to handle this. So go ahead and pause the video. Uh, do this problem. It might take you a minute or two and put your answers into the comment section. Then we'll go ahead and uh, check your work in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But if you are having a difficult time in algebra or math in general, I can help you out. I've been teaching math for decades, and I um, although I am a teacher, I like to think of myself as someone who explains math. And I really, really use language that's non-textbook-like. I explain things in super clear and understandable ways so anyone and everyone can understand. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, I can definitely help you out. Now, if you're preparing for any kind of test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplace, or CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam. I can definitely help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, you got to check out my homeschool math courses. Uh, I was just voted number one for middle and high school mathematics from a major national homeschool uh, publication. Very excited about that. And um, if you need some math notes, well, don't panic. I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video as well. But I'm here to tell you that uh, if you don't learn how to take great math notes, you are not going to achieve top grades in math. So start improving your notes and everything will start getting better. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. And we're going to start off with just some basic examples. Okay, so... Again, what we're talking about here is solving for a specific variable when there's multiple variables in an equation. So here we have an equation of a line, and this is in standard form. 2x plus 3y is equal to 8. What if I told you to rewrite this equation in terms of y? Okay, so can you do that? All right, or here we have a basic physics formula. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. Can you rewrite uh, this formula in terms of A, okay, solve for acceleration. And here we have rate times times equal to distance. So if I told you to write this in terms of T, can you do that? So let's go ahead and actually work our uh, way this way. All right, so we'll do these real, uh, problems real fast. And actually, if you want to uh, pause the video and just do these real quick, this will be a good check to see if you can handle this more challenging problem. So if I want to solve for T here, you got to think of the R and the D in this particular variable as numbers. So, for example, instead of RT is equal to D, the only thing that we're going to treat as a variable is the, is the variable that we're trying to solve for. So, let's just think of the R, let's say, as a 2, okay? And then we have our T, and then let's uh, think of the D as, I don't know, let's say 7. Now, I'm just making numbers up. The whole idea here is just to um, get you to understand the uh, kind of the mental procedure when you're solving for a particular variable when there's multiple variables. So if I'm solving for T, I'm only going to think of T as the variable and R and D as just some numbers. It doesn't really make a difference what numbers um, you're going to think of uh, uh, them. Just think of them as numbers. So if I had the equ equation 2T is equal to 7, how would I solve for T? You would be like, oh, don't we just divide both sides of the equation by 2? And you would be absolutely right. Okay, so whatever was in front of the T 
we're going to divide that by what was over here. So in this case, uh, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by uh, r. So t, let me write this down here, is equal to d over r. Okay, so I rewrote this formula, rt, or rate times time is equal to distance, in terms of t, i.e., time is equal to distance over uh, uh, the rate. Okay, so you're not uh, breaking the formula or equation, you're just rewriting it in a different way. So let's go ahead and take a look at this basic example. So force is equal to mass times acceleration. So we're going to solve for A. So I'm going to think of M and F as numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by M. So force over mass is equal to acceleration. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at this problem. Uh, 2x plus 3y is equal to 8. This is a, a very kind of classic um, area uh, where a very common area where students, when they're struggling uh, solving systems of equations in Algebra 1, if you don't know what that is, you're going to study it, and you're using a substitution method, you have to solve for one of the variables in one of the equations. And students struggle with this because they don't understand this topic that we're talking about, how to solve for a particular variable. So let's uh, rewrite this equation in terms of x. Okay, so uh, we're going to have to solve for x. So we're thinking of everything else in terms um, as of uh, a number. So 3 times y, this is just like one number in and of itself. So to solve for x, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 3y from both sides of the equation. And I get 2x is equal to 8 minus 3y. So to solve for x, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2 and you get x is equal to 8 minus 3y over 2. Okay, and we could put this in parentheses, and this would be an expression that you would use, for example, when you're uh, doing the substitution method, when you're solving for systems of equations. But a lot of students can't uh, do the substitution method properly because they don't know how to solve for a particular variable in a particular equation. So you really got to practice this stuff. So if this right here is kind of hard for you, I'm going to give you a couple suggestions. One, I have a lot of additional videos on this in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist on my YouTube channel. Or you you know you probably want to sign up for one of my algebra courses, uh, pre-algebra, algebra one, college algebra, algebra two. I got a ton of them. So you just pick the which uh, whatever course that you're in, in terms of an algebra course, and uh, you know that if you really wanna learn this stuff with me, that's what you wanna do. But let's get into this problem now. I'm gonna go a little bit quick uh, because um, I don't wanna take up too much time, but I really wanted to set the parameters here on what we're trying to do. Okay, so we're gonna solve for W. So here's a W here, here's a W here. So what do we need to do? Well, first of all, you need to recognize that this is one fraction Okay, that's equal to another fraction. So if you have something like one half is equal to four over eight, one fraction is equal to another fraction, you can always do the cross product. This is the definition of a, uh, of a proportion. So in other words, when I look here, one times eight, that's equal to two times four. So anytime you have a fraction equal to another fraction, you can always cross multiply and start off your work that way. Okay, so... If you didn't know that, you got to be, you know, this is why math is so interconnected. You got to be looking for shortcut ways. So here I'm like, oh, one fraction is equal to another fraction. I can go ahead and uh, use the cross product. Now, one thing you have to be very careful about is anytime you have sums and differences in algebra, oftentimes there is no parentheses or grouping symbols around these expressions. Go ahead and put them in uh, because if, uh, if you don't see them, you need to add them in. It's going to keep you out of trouble. So I purposely didn't write these um, uh, grouping symbols in because uh, oftentimes you'll see problems where they're not written in. But here's what happens. A student will go uh, W times uh, XY plus 1, and they'll say, oh, the answer is WXY plus 1. I've probably seen that mistake 100,000 times. And I'm like, oh, boy, why did they make that mistake? Well, because they, you know, they forgot to put parentheses around this, because if they're like, oh, W times uh, X ply, XY plus 1, they'll write it this way, and then they'll be much more inclined to use the distributive property. So put those grouping symbols in. So we're going to go this way, and then we're going to take this 3 and multiply by Z minus W. So we got 3 times Z minus W, and there we go. Okay, so this is the way, we, this is the way we're going to uh, start off the problem. Now we have really no choice but to use the distributive property. 
And you got to take this step, and that way we can kind of see what terms we're working with. So W times XY, WXY, W uh, times 1, W, 3 times Z, 3Z, and 3 times W, 3W. All right, but where are we taking this problem? Well, we're going to have to get all the W's together because I'm trying to solve for W. So anything that has a W in it, we're going to have to kind of collect on one side of the equation. So over here, we have a W, X, Y. So we have a W. That's good. That's over here. We're going to keep it over there. We have a W here. And then I have this 3W. Let's scoot this over to the other side of the equation. So how can I do that? Well, simply add 3W to both sides of the equation and you're left with this, okay, W, X, Y plus W plus 3W is equal to 3Z. Okay, so what are we doing uh, from here? Well, we're looking to simplify anything we can simplify, and here I have 1W and I have 3W, so I can combine like terms. So this is 4W, so I have W, X, Y plus 4W is equal to 3Z. Okay, we're getting closer, but at this point of the problem, if I want to get W by itself, and I got W intertwined with these terms, I'm going to have to factor out a W. And I can do that because W is a common factor here. So let's factor out the W. So I have W times XY plus 4. Okay, so X, W times XY plus 4 is equal to 3Z. And now it's pretty easy to get W by itself. All I need to do is divide both sides of the equation by XY plus 4. And over here, this would be an xy plus 4, and this is the final answer right here. Okay, so uh, w is equal to 3z over xy plus 4. Okay, so how many of you got that right? Okay, now if you got this right all by yourself, didn't need any help, then I must go ahead and give you a good old 1981 Mohawk. Okay, well, I'm going to keep throwing some extra colors because that was pretty impressive, okay? Now, I don't know if you know about the Mo uh, Mohawk haircut, but um, if you look at these old vintage uh, movies that were done in the 80s and whatnot, people actually wore these haircuts and they thought it was pretty cool, okay? When you're young, you know, you like you, know, you kind of want to do things that are kind of far-fetched and whatnot. Anyways, that's a pretty cool haircut, just like your ability to do this problem. So, nice job, okay? Very, very good. And, uh, of course, if you're able to do this problem, uh, hopefully you're also able to do these problems. I'm pretty sure that was the case as well. But, um, you know, that's very, very good. Okay, you're going to need to know how to work with variables and formulas, um, equations where there's multiple variables. This is such an important skill. Now, if you're completely lost in this, again, start with the basic type of problems, like the ones I showed you, and then work your way up. Okay, so this particular problem might be a little bit uh, difficult. Again, 99% of uh, students that aren't up to speed on their algebra would get pretty lost on uh, doing this type of problem, but you need to know how to do this problem. And hopefully this video helped you out. And if that is the case, consider helping me out by smashing that like button and subscribing to my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math to advanced math and like calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of my content. Uh, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.